In this video, we're going to be looking at some basic statistics when you're dealing with a dist distribution of values. It could be test scores or just data. And you might want to compute, say, the standard deviation, the range, the mean, the median, the mode. So before I look at this table that I have here, let's look at the main formulas here. The mean of n data items is given by this formula. So x bar is the mean. To find it, you simply add all the values and then divide by the number of values. That's what most teachers use to find the average of, say, a test or a student's homework scores. And then the next formula is the formula for the standard deviation of a sample. There's another one also where it has an n in the denominator. That's if you're doing the whole population, but most of the time you'll be working with a small sample. So this is what you would have. And we'll go over what that is telling you in a minute here. But let's look at the this right here. Each one has five values. So we can find the, the mean again by simply adding those values up and dividing by five. These are all 75, so obviously the, that means it's going to be 75. For the second data here, add those up, and again I get 75. For the third one, add those up, divide by five, again I get 75. Now the middle value is simply, or the median I should say, is the middle value in the distribution. So if you have these arranged from small to large, or from large to small, in other words, in order of size, the middle value will always be the median. It is an even number. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. The middle value is 75. These are arranged in order of size, and the middle one is 75. Over here, 75. So for this distribution, the mean is 75 in all of them. The median is 75 in all of them. So if you're given that information, you would say, well, they're pretty much identical samples. But then we look at the at the range. The range is simply the, again, this is a measure of variation or dispersion. You take the largest value in the distribution minus the smallest. So, so this one's 75 and 75, so that's zero. And the next one, the high, largest value is 100. The smallest is 45. Take the difference, we get 55. And then in the third one, largest value is 80. The smallest one is 65. Subtract those, we get 15. So this tells me the samples are not the same. The range is 0 for the first one, 55 for the second, and 15 for the third. Now we look at the standard deviation. The standard deviation, again, measures the amount of dispersion. So basically, well, another way to say it is the standard deviation is the extent to which values in a distribution deviate from the from the mean. So if you have a set of data and they tell you that the standard deviation is say 10, that basically tells you that on average the values in that distribution deviate from the mean by 10. So on average they're 10 values apart. So the larger the standard deviation, the more dispersion you have in the set of data. So you look at the first one here, standard deviation of zero. Well, obviously, because they're all the same. They're zero distance from 75. Whereas the second one, 21.5. So this one has more dispersion. The first one has no variation. They're all the same. In the second data, we have 29.5. So on average, these values deviate from the from the mean, which is 75, by an average of 21.5. And you can see for that for the third one, the deviation is 6.1. So there's less dispersion. Now, as a teacher, you want the standard deviation to be closer to the third one. Doesn't have to be that small. But in the second one, there's 21.5. That tells you that there's a variation in the student's knowledge for whatever you're testing on that particular test. You ought to be more, a little bit more uniform. So I would prefer a standard deviation, say, uh, on uh, test scores of less than 10, if possible. Now, how do we find these? Obviously, the mean is fairly easy to compute. You add the values up and divide by the total. 
uh, the median, of course, as like we said, is the middle, the middle value. Arrange them in order of size. And if it's a odd number, the middle value you have is the median. If it's an even, you take the middle two values and average those out. In other words, add them up and divide by two. The range, of course, is the easiest one. The largest minus the smallest. So now let's go, go to the formula here. Let's say you wanted to find the, deviate, the uh, standard deviation for this set of data. And let's suppose these are test scores. And I have the frequency here. So let's say, let's say you gave a test and there was one person that made 100 or 50, I should say. Uh, three people made 55. Two people made 60. Three got a score of 65. Five got a score of 70. And so on. Six got a score of 100. So the first thing you do to set up this table is you add these up. I'm going I'm to show you how to do it manually and then we'll do it in the calculator because if you're taking a class where you're going to be doing these, these types of computations, I doubt it if the teacher is going to have you do these manually. But you should know how to do it manually. So first of all, we add, we add these up in the calculator. So 50 times 1, 55 times 3, 60 times 2, 65 times 3, 70 times 5, and so on down the line, 100 times 6. Add those up and then divide by the frequency here on the second column. There's 40 of these values. Like I said, some of those are repeated. So if you do that, so you find the mean first and then you round it out to, to I'm going to round it out to one decimal place. So this will be 78. 0.9. That's the mean. If I add up the, the scores on the, on the first column and of course multiply by the, uh, incorporate the uh, frequency here, 50 times 1, 55 times 3, all the way down. And then you divide that value by the total number of scores, which if you, you get from this frequency, which is 40. You divide that by 40, you get 78.9. And then what we do to get the, the value in the third column right here, we simply divide or sub subtract, I'm sorry, the, the mean. So it's 50 subtract 78.9 gives me this value. 55 subtract 78.9 gives me this value. And so on down the line. Okay, that's how I get these values on the uh, third column. Take the value in the first column, subtract 78.9, go all the way down, 100. Minus 78.9 gives me this value right here. And then on the last column here, or the fourth column, all, all I'm doing here is taking this value in the third column and squaring it. And I get that. Negative 23.9, you square it, and we get this value. Negative 18.9, you square it, you get this value, and so on, all the way down. And then you're simply going to add these. So we get hit to the formula. So now you have you have the squares here, the difference of the score and the and the DBA, um, it's having the score and the and the mean. And then you square them. Got this in the second in the uh, last column. And then now if these weren't repeated, if these weren't repeated here, you would simply add up the the last column and plug it into this formula here divide by one less than the frequency, total frequency, which was 40, so it'd be divided by 49, take the square root. But we have a frequency here. So what you have to do then is this. So it would be 835.31 times one, of course, gives me that same thing. And then 571.21 times three. So all we're doing is multiplying by the frequency. 357.21 times two. 193.21 times 3, all the way down the uh, column. And then you're going to add those up, and divide by 39. So that's this formula right here. N minus 1, so that's 40 minus 1 is 39. And then you take the square root, and you're going to get your standard deviation. Now that could take you a while. Now how would you, how would you do that on, a, on the calculator? Now, I've already have this I already have this entered here so I'm going to go to stat and then edit so you can so you can see this 
and there they are. So 50, 50 is the first one. So you would enter a 50 there, you could enter, and then a 55. So we're first entering the value, hit enter, and then 60, 70, all the way to the last one, which is 100. And then the second column, and that's the L2, you add the frequency. And that's what I have there. So if I put in one, and then the next one's a three, enter, then two, enter, and so on. Now you have it all set up. And of course the calculator knows the frequency already. So it's gonna know what to do. So from here then we go to second and then calculate. And it's always gonna be one variable for these types. So one variable, hit enter. Now if you didn't have frequency, if none of the scores were repeated and they were all different, then here you could just hit enter. But I do have a frequency here. So I go to the first note here in the calculator. Look, L1 is the first column in the calculator. That was the scores. And then the frequency was under column two or L2. So let's do this uh, second. There's the L1 and then a comma. Now the L2 hit second and then five. That gives me the L2. Do this again here. So again, it's second and L2. Hit the wrong one. L2. So there I have it. L1 is the first column that has the scores and L2 is the uh, frequency. So I hit enter and here's the uh, statistics I need. So X bar, that's my mean. So now you know that the mean or the average for those test scores is 78. And of course, we, we found that if you did it the long way, you, you already knew that. So it's 78.9 to one place. And there's some other information there that we don't need for this one here. And here your standard deviation. The one we want is the S sub X, because that's the one where you're dividing by N minus one. And the one for the population, that's where you're dividing by N. You can see there's not that much difference. But the one we want is the S sub X. I'm just going to leave it with S. And that's 14.6 to one decimal place. So the standard deviation is not that large like the, than the other example that I gave. But this again tells you the, the amount of variation in that, in that sample. In this case, we're looking at set of scores. Now, in some cases, formulas were used, some, some more advanced formulas were used. The variance, I just labeled it V here. That's just the score, or the square of the standard deviation. So if you square the standard deviation value, that would give you the variance. Or if in some problem you're given the variance, they want the standard deviation, you just take the square root of the variance. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.